Hi, my name is Evgeny Stepanov. I work at Google here in Mountain View. And uh, uh, recently I've looked into uh, switching, migrating our internal code base to libc++. And this talk is kind of a list of things that went well and the list of problems in libc++ that it uncovered. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, the code base is big and very quickly changing. So uh, we were looking for not just uh, standard compliance in our C++ library, but we also needed it to be more like a drop-in replacement for libstd C++ uh, with some amount of back-to-back -back compatibility even. Um, so the following will be a list of things that, um, so yeah, let's start with the, mo the, the biggest one probably, it's containers of incomplete types. Uh, standard library containers uh, sometimes cannot be instantiated in libc++ in Lib Lib with incomplete element types. This is actually a very common idiom. Uh, for example, you can declare um, recursive uh, structures this way, or uh, in the second example, a, a class that knows its own location in some other container. Um, and this is actually supported in all other popular implementations. Uh, some time ago, we've fixed this in hash set and hash map in libc++. Uh, fixing it in deck, which is another very popular case, uh, is unfortunately an ABI breaking change. And libc++ is very serious about uh, keeping uh, ABI stability. So the next problem is ABI stability. Um, there are a few, reason, a few good reasons to keep uh, libc++ ABI stable, but uh, some users, like Google, for example, don't really care about that, and we, what we really want is the, uh, all the best features of the standard library, whether they break ABI or not. So, and this is something that's already implemented in libc++, it's a fresh thing, uh, ABI versioning. You can build libc++, by defining two CMake variables for, uh, for some specified ABI level. And you can even require an unstable ABI which will turn on all the features that we have in the code base. Uh, and currently we have one such feature. It's uh, in, STD, in STD string, it's the one that enables the new string layout. Uh, it places string buffer at the beginning of, this, of the object, improving its performance and um, alignment. Another problem is the use of always in line in libc++. Uh, always in line is used to, uh, to control the API because it, it lets, it, it ensures that certain symbols are emitted, are, are not emitted from um, object files that use libc++. And it's used very extensively in libc++, in libc++ headers. Uh, there are a few problems with it. First of all, it's not guaranteed to work. So uh, there are cases when always inline functions are not inlined. And we, are, we observed this as a link failure, actually. And it completely breaks O0 optimization level for libc++ because uh, inlining a lot of functions and then not optimizing the result results in huge stack frames. And we've seen simply uh, stack overflows. Um, so um, you, you might have seen a proposition for a new client-specific attribute, internal linkage, on CFEDEV. Uh, the point is to take the good things out of always in line uh, and do not take the bad things. Uh, effectively, it allows us to place um, C style st static on class methods. Um, another thing is uh, assignment requirements for containers. So uh, libstd C++, the GNU implementation, uh, does not require uh, for the uh, container element to be copy assignable, for the container itself to be copy assignable. This is a violation of the standard. Uh, 
but it appears to be a very useful violation, uh, simply because uh, const class members are very common, actually, and they uh, suppress uh, the generation of default uh, assignment operator. Uh, um, this is another thing. Uh, this is a violation of, of the standard on side of libs tdc++. Um, pair and the initializer list have uh, const expert constructors in C11 there, and by the standard, they are only present in C14. Uh, uh, so, again, since recently, libc++ has a replacement for non standard uh, random sample function. Uh, this is a complete replacement, so uh, no problem there. And there is another standing problem in libc++ Lips, in where um, we have an extension for tuple class that allows uh, constructing tuples without pro providing all tuple elements. Uh, so the rest of elements will be default initialized. And uh, there are some problems with the implementation where uh, this constructor can be confused with a copy constructor resulting in an infinite recursion in template instantiation. There is a patch for review, please please help with that, if you can. And a few smaller things like, uh, uh, for example, stdpow is a template in one library and a function in other library, so invalid code can notice this. It's a problem in, in the user code, so it should be just fixed there. Uh, const reference of the vector of bool, uh, libc++ is to blame here actually. Uh, by standard, it must be bool, and this is noticeable in standard compliant code. Uh, and, uh, well, the last one is quite obvious, hash functions are different, and uh, we've had to fix lots of tests that somehow assumed some iteration order. It's mostly a, a test problem. That's all I have.